blue, blue, blue. Do you struggle with integrals? Do you even know what integrals are? Well, for this lesson, we're gonna talk about it. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about integrals, a fundamental concept in calculus that helps us understand accumulation in area under curves. There are two main types of integrals, definite and indefinite. For this lesson, I want to emphasize on definite. But first, let's start with a formula. f of x is equal to f of b minus f of a from a to b. In this formula, a and b are called the limits of integration, specifically a, the lower limit, and b, the upper limit. A represents a smaller value or the least between a set. For example, x is equal to 3, 1, and x is equal to negative 4, negative 5. Among those, the lower limits are 1 and negative 5. The symbols f of a and f of b refer to the antiderivatives of f of x, meaning they are the original functions whose derivative is f of x. Now, let's talk about indefinite integral. Its formula is f of x is equal to the antiderivative of f of x plus c. Unlike definite integrals, these give us a family of functions, not a specific number. The plus c, called the constant of integration, represents any constant value since derivatives are constants of zero. Going back to definite integrals, when you evaluate these, you end up with a specific number, which often represents the net area under the curve. Evaluate 4x dx through negative 4 to 3. We begin by finding the antiderivative of the function. Remember, the formula for the antiderivative of x raised to n is x raised to n plus 1 over n plus 1. Applying this formula to 4x, we get 4x squared over 2. Simplifying it further, we get 2x squared. Now, we evaluate f of b minus f of a by substituting the limits into the function. Then, the final answer will be negative 14. Evaluate the quantity of x squared plus 3x dx through 1 to 2. Following the same process, we find the antiderivative of the function x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2. Substituting the limits and calculating f of b minus f of a, we subtract two quantities, and through performing the arithmetic, gives us a final answer of 41 over 6. Evaluate 3 over x squared dx through 1 to 2. In this process, we avoid fractions by rewriting the function with negative exponents. Therefore, 3x raised to negative 2 dx. Apply the antiderivative formula, we get 3x raised to 1 over negative 1 is equal to 3 over negative x. Now, we substitute the limits and evaluate f of b minus f of a. This simplifies to 3 halves. Evaluate 2x plus 3 all over the quantity of x squared plus 3x minus 7 squared dx through 0 to 2. To solve this, we will use u substitution. First, we identify u as the inner function. u equals to x squared plus 3x minus 7. Next, we find du by differentiating u. du is equal to 2x plus 3dx. This means we can replace 2x plus 3dx with du, simplifying the integral to du over u squared. 
To avoid fractions, we rewrite it as a negative exponent. Integral of u raised to negative 2d. Performing the antiderivative sequence, we apply the power rule u raised to negative 1 over negative 1 is equal to negative u raised to negative 1. Bringing the negative exponent back to the denominator and substituting the original expression for u, we get negative 1 over the quantity of x squared plus 3x minus 7. Since this is a definite integral, we ignore plus c. Now, we substitute for the limits of f of b by f of a. Evaluating this expression gives us a final answer of negative 10 over 21. <laughs> You've seen, evaluating definite integrals involves finding the antiderivative, substituting the limits, and calculating the difference. By mastering these steps, you can confidently tackle a wide range of integral problems. That's it. Thank you. <coughs>